graphing sine and cosine function. Now graphing trig function like sine, cosine, tangent and its inverses are what we call as graph of a periodic function. When we say periodic, it means it repeats over and over again. And for today's function, we're just going to use one period of a given sine and cosine function. It may be a little bit um, difficult to visualize, but I'm going to show you how one period of sine and cosine function will look like if we graph it in a grid. So before we can start graphing sine function, you should know the standard form of a sine function. So this one is what we have for the standard form of a sine function. y equals a sine b theta, where a and b are both real numbers. Examples of which will be number one, y equals 3 sine 2 theta. So the, our a here will be 3 and b will be 2 in this particular function. So once again, you need to identify the values of a and b in a sine function so we can graph our um, trig function. So it is true for sine, cosine, and tangent, and also in inverses. So for number 2, if I have y equals sine theta, my a and b are both 1. Since you're not seeing any numerical value for sine theta, you should know that a is 1 and b is also 1. And for f of x equal to negative 5 sine 1 half x, a is negative 5 and b is 1 half. Now let's start graphing our first function and it's going to be a sine function. Now as I've mentioned, the graph of a trig function is periodic which means it only repeats and it has the same behavior over and over again. So this is an example of a graph of a sine function of one period. So one period of a sine function should look like this. So it has its intercepts and maximum and minimum point. Now take note that the behavior of your sine function always starts at 0, 0 here at the center and it goes up until it touches the maximum point. And once it touches the maximum point, it will start to go down to your x-axis, and then it will go down again to hit the minimum point. And once it hit the minimum point, it will start going up again. So this is the behavior of your sine function, and it's periodic. And the reason why it's periodic is because it repeats. And this is just one period of your sine function. We still don't know what type of sine function is this. It could be sine 2 theta or 3 sine 2 theta. But later on, we're going to have a specific example of a sine function that will look like this. Now, let me show you how the graph of sine function is. Now this is not going to be uh, pretty, but this is how the graph of sine function should look like. It needs to repeat and it's periodical. So it's just going to go repeat over and over again from the negative infinity to the positive infinity. And what you're seeing on my board right now is just a period or a slice of your sine function. So when I slice this up, this is just what you're seeing in your graph. So this is just one period. So this is the graph of a sine function that we're going to be working on today. Now, for our first example, we have y equals 3 sine 4x. And uh, to find the amplitude and the period of the graph, it's important that you know the formula for finding the amplitude and the period of a sine function. The amplitude is given by the formula of the absolute value of a. And the period is equal to 2 pi over b. And applying this formula, we'll be able to find the amplitude and the period of 3 sine 4x. The amplitude is absolute value of a, so a is 3 in this function, so the amplitude for this function is simply 3. And for the period of 3 sine 4x, we will use 4 as the value of b, and we'll have 2 pi over b as our formula. And using the formula, substitute b for 4, so you have 2 pi over 4, which gives us a period of pi over 2. So these are our parts, or the important parts of your sine function that we will use in graphing later on. Amplitude of 3 and period of pi over 2. So this is our function, 3 sine 4x with an amplitude of 3 and a period of pi over 2. To find the graph of this sine function that we know is periodic, it behaves the same way as the original graph that I showed you on the previous slide. So it starts at 0, 0 and it ends at pi over 2. Now another important thing that you need to know about the graph of a sine function is that you need to partition it into four equal parts. So this is my 1, 
period and I need to divide it into four equal parts. And how I did it is I took half of pi over 2 and half of pi over 2 is simply pi over 4 and half of pi over 4 which will give me this value is pi over 8. Now my only problem is how to find this part of your um, period. So to find 3 pi over 8, I simply added pi over 8 and pi over 4, which gives me 3 pi over 8. So these partitions are very important because that's the partition that you will use in analyzing a sine function. So from the graph of a sine function, it needs to start at the center. So from the center, or 0, 0, it goes up. And once it hits its amplitude, which is positive 3, it will start to go down, hitting the x-intercept. And then it should go down again to hit the minimum point of your graph, which is at negative 3. And from negative 3, it will start to go up again. So this is the behavior of your sine function for 3 sine 4x. And now we're ready to analyze our graph because you are seeing now the minimum and the maximum points and also the intercept of your sine function. Now this is your minimum. This is your maximum, and these two points will be your intercepts. And to write it in ordered pair, the maximum point will be at x is pi over 8, y is equal to positive 3. So that's why my maximum point is at pi over 8 and 3. And for my minimum point, which is right here, I have an x value of 3 pi over 8 and a y value of negative 3. So this is my ordered pair for my minimum point. And for my intercepts, I have pi over 4 and 0, and I have pi over 2 and 0. So those are the points that will intersect the x-axis. So this is the graph of a sine function for 3 sine 4x. Once again, it's periodic. It only repeats, but in your graph, we're only concerned about one period. So the things that you need to have before you can graph a sine function is you need to have your amplitude, you need to have your period, and you need to have the four partitions of your period so that you can find the behavior of your sine graph. Now let's start graphing a cosine function. Now, graphing a cosine function is similar to graphing a sine function. You need your amplitude, you need your period, and you need your four partitions. And the formula will still be the same. The only difference is the behavior of the graph. From a sine function, you always start at the center, and then you go up, and then you go down, and then you go down again until you hit the minimum point, and then you start going up again. Now, for a cosine function, the behavior is different. Instead of starting from 0, 0, or at the center, you will start at the very top. So this is your amplitude, and from the amplitude, you will start to go down from your four partition, so going down, hitting the bottom, then moving up again until you hit the top. So this is one period of your cosine function. And if I'm going to draw the graph of a cosine function where it repeats the period over and over again, it should look like this. It's pretty much the same as a sine function. But instead, I'm going to start at the top, hitting the bottom. And then from the negative side, The graph of the cosine function should look like this. Now, since we're only using one period, this is my period right here. And this is the graph that I'm going to be finding or graphing in a while ago. So this is my cosine graph. And this is how it should look like if you graph it over and over again from the negative side and the positive side. Now let's have our first example of a function where we're graphing the cosine behavior. So we have y is equal to 5 cosine 1 half theta in this example where we know that the amplitude is the absolute value of a which gives us 5 and the period will be 2 pi over b and b here is 1 half. So this is my formula and 2 pi over 1 half will give me 2 pi times 2 over 1 which gives me 4 pi. So my amplitude for this function will be 5 and my period will be 4 pi. And I'm going to partition it into four equal parts so I can start graphing my cosine function. So the graph of y equals 5 cosine 1 half theta, given that the amplitude is equal to 5 and a period of 4 pi. So I start here and I made four partitions. So I took half of 4, half of 4 is 2, half of 2 is 1. 
and then I add this two together so I can have my third partition. So pi plus two pi is three pi. So these are my four partitions and I'm ready to graph. So according to my graph of cosine, the behavior starts at the top going down. So from the top, from the amplitude at five, it starts to go down and it will hit your x axis and then it should go down again to hit your minimum point and once you hit the minimum point of your cosine function it starts to go up again until it hits the maximum point using your four partitions so your four partitions will give you your maximum your minimum and the intercepts of your cosine function and to find the maximum point the maximum point will be here which is at 0 5 so this is your maximum point and this could also be your maximum point so we will have this as the value for 4 pi and 5 so let's add this up so 4 pi and 5 so those are the maximum points of our cosine function that we just graphed so the minimum point will be this tip of your cosine function which gives you the x value of 2 pi and the y value of negative 5 and for the intercepts we have 2 we have pi and 3 pi and since we need an ordered pair it's supposed to be pi and 0 because x is pi and y is 0 so we have intercept of pi and 0 and 3 pi and 0 and this is how we graph a cosine function